In the late 1960s, Portugal's narrow gauge lines were all going strong and there was only just a whiff of dieselization in the form of rail cars. There were three main systems, that in the south, based at Sanada da Vulga, the Douro Valley lines east of Porto, and the busy Porto suburban system, based at Trindade station. All were metre gauge. The Sanada da Vulga lines ran west to Aveiro, north to Aspino, and west to Vizur. A glorious combination of tank engines were in use, ranging from tiny 260s to 2460 compounds to 282s. All these types were in regular use on passenger trains, which were usually mixed. Perhaps the most vigorous system of all was that based on Porto, where suburban trains ran an extremely frequent service, morning and evening times in particular, in and out of Trindade terminus. Part of the way, it was even double track, where trains had a nifty turn of speed. In the late 1960s, early 70s, Trindade station in the evening was at least 90% steam, with trains coming in and out every few minutes, headed by 260 tanks, which were in the minority, 0440 Malay tanks with gleaming copper cap chimneys and Henschel 282 tanks, big enough for the standard gauge, let alone a meter gauge railway. Most had to be cold, watered and turned before going out again. The 0440 Malays in particular were pretty little machines, just right somehow for a narrow gauge railway. They looked right, worked right, and were there in abundance. Like all Portuguese substandard gauge locos, they carried the E prefix before their numbers, in this case at the base of their chimneys. Coaching stock was comfortable bogies, well suited to commuter trains and the rail cars, moderns, often running in tandem. Faster and quicker off the mark than the steam services, they naturally carried less people, which gave them a disadvantage in the high loading peak hour periods, but a distinct advantage operationally. The livery was dark blue, corresponding to that of the newer bogey stock. They were two-man operated, a driver and a travelling conductor to act as guard and ticket inspector. The Henschel 282 tanks, like so many of the Portuguese meter gauge engines, all had copper cap chimneys, again with their number plates on the sides. To see one waiting at the platform end was to realise that this was a real railway. Station work was fast, no sooner was the train emptied of passengers than the engine was unhooked, ran round the train and drifted back into the servicing area adjacent to the tunnel under the city. Whilst neat 0440 tanks run in and out with their trains, one of these engines remains a station pilot. These engines are relatively elderly, dating from 1905, whereas the smoke-deflected Henschel 282 tanks were built in 1931. But the most elderly are the 260 tanks, some of them going back to 1886 with copper cap bell mouths. They come from a variety of builders, Decauville, Kessler, Orenstein and & Koppel and Esslingen. All of them are maintained and overhauled at the Boa Vista workshops between Trindade Station and the junction of Senhora de Hora at the end of a double track section. The standard of cleanliness is good, difficult sometimes on the busy Porto lines, but like the whole of Portugal's railway system, everything appears to be excellently maintained. The Henschel tank number plate on chimney and works plate on tank side has had its quick service, 
another 0440 Malay tank has been released from its train and a new cycle of events begins. The 282 tank begins its manoeuvres to run down onto its train. No trouble running bunker first with this commodious cap. And within a few minutes they're away with a quick shrill whistle before diving into the tunnel for the climb up the steeply graded double track to Sonora da Hora. Its first stop en route to Pavoa de Vazim. Hengels did well on these narrow gauge lines in Portugal, building not only the 282 tanks but also the 0440 Malleys. And, as we shall now see, an improbable and also compound 2460 tank, which works the cargo line up from the Douro Valley. The cargo line, the second up the Long River Valley, runs from Rejur to Chavez, with a major centre en route to Villa Real, the terminus for a number of trains, because Chavez is a long way north and the area bleak. Early afternoon at Villa Real sees three trains, one up from Rejur terminating there, and two coming from and going to Chavez Crossing. Each has a compound 2460 tank, the only motive power used on the branch. First mixed, all trains run in this format behind a spotless number E208, moves out to drop back in the centre road to clear the way for the next northbound train. It consists of five tarpaulin wagons and two green six-wheel coaches neatly fitting into the loop. The two coaches, one a clear story, are mostly wooden seated, giving cheap travel to the local farmers and country folk. But first class is available with its antique comfort, plush furnishings and antimacassars. Villarreal now becomes a busy station. Almost as soon as a southbound train comes to a halt, that from Rejour comes in fast to the other end of the low platform. Passengers climb aboard, mail is unloaded from the red post vans, and the two trains are away almost simultaneously, one climbing up to Chavez, the other dropping down to the Douro Valley at Rejour, which also has the workshops for this section. The southbound train drifts out of the station, the compound Malay tank making easy work of the falling grades. But the twisting curves limit speed to a gentle trot, the power bogies swinging easily into the bends. This is very much vineyard and olive country, with terraced hills on either side of the tracks. Station stops are short, just time to load and unload passengers and vans. It's a neat and tidy operation. At Rejour, life becomes more formal and the Corgo branch train is relegated to a bay platform. This is very much a dual gauge station and in consequence there are two station pilots, an ageing 060 tank, number E54 for the meter gauge system and an equally venerable French built compound 460 working out its last days on the 5 foot 6 inch. The train from Villa Real is pulled out to release the 2460 tank. As this is running down to the disposal area around a dual gauge turntable, the French compound drops a rake of coaches down into the Porto platform, ready for the broad gauge connection to the big city. The coaches are sliding door, central entrance, modern suburban stock. Not the acme of comfort, but this is no fast intercity service.
Until recent times, these broad gauge trains were 100% steam operated, but today the diesels have arrived, and one of these will take the train west. It backs down slowly. To the left is one of the modern 284 tanks now used on the steam services, replacing the three classes of 460, which ran the trains for decades. The diesel moves off with a rumble and mutter. The new era on the Douro Valley line has begun. In fact, there's another diesel, which has come in on a freight, sitting on an adjacent line, as we take a quick look at the modern and massive 284 tank. The 2460 tank moves onto the table, and a quick glance to the right has shown one of the old 460s still alive and working the odd train. All these roads off the turntable are multi-gauge and can be used by both meter and five foot six gauge engines, willy-nilly. The cargo line tank takes on coal, a laborious hand-carrying job, but labor in Portugal is cheap at present. Whilst this is going on, the 284 tank comes in with the mixed going east up the valley, which forms a connection with the evening cargo line train being marshalled by 060 tank number E54, with a rake of open wagons to precede the coaches. At the same time, the French 460 drops extra coaches down to form the broad gauge train. The next period of activity is about to begin, for the Mallet tank is now backing into the narrow gauge bay platform, black smoke drifting lazily from her copper cap chimney. The 284 tank moves off smartly, heading towards the Spanish border, making light of its load. It too carries its number on a brass plate fixed on each side, if one can use that term, of the chimney. The sign of the times are the electric wire warning plates carried on each of the two sand domes, for these engines are also used on the main line, which is fully electrified. As the Corgo line train moves up its twisting tracks on the journey north, it's said to reflect that soon these smart compound tanks will be ousted by diesel rail cars and diesel locos. They've served their valleys well and earned their retirement. <laughs>